Hello and welcome. In this session today, I am going to be taking you through a Google email account uh, across to Microsoft 365. We're going to be migrating a, a Google G Suite um, email account into a Microsoft 365 tenant using the BitTitan migration wiz tool. I'm going to take you through the entire process end to end, which is setting up everything on the source environment so we can extract data from it, how we go about doing that, and of course, setting up the target tenant to receive the data as well setting up the different endpoints and making sure they're configured correctly. I'll be showing you all the little things you need to do along the way to make all that happen, everything you need to do in both sides, and then obviously performing the migration as well. So you'll see the migration actually happen and the data come across in from one, uh, the Google workspace into the target tenant. So to start off, you can see if I go into the, the inbox here for this account, it's a very standard uh, email account inside uh, Gmail and you can see if I just move around you can see it is a, a live account. So we're going to bring that across into the M365 tenant. Which is in here you can see there's my account. I've already configured the domain inside the, the tenant. Uh, I've already got the account set up. It's licensed as you can see. So it is sitting there ready as a live account ready to receive data. Now there's obviously a few things we need to do on the Google site, and there's two places we're going to be doing that. Um, we've got to have the, uh, the console.cloud.google.com and also the normal admin.google.com. But before we jump into that, I'm going to jump into the migration with console here. We'll just log in. In fact, I, I have that set up here already. And we're going to be creating a new project. So here we obviously choose mailbox project and go in there and put some details around that. Call it that rock smashes email we're going to set up a new company as well with some basic details in there as you can see save that and the next step will be telling us to set up the source endpoint now this is where we do the work inside google first because it's going to be asking us for a json file which is the like the, the linkage and the admin rights that we need to give migration with to get into that so we're going to go back to the the Google Cloud side. Now this particular one here, you can see we go to console.cloud.google.com. I've already used this tenant for the uh, Google Drive project, which you might have seen the, the other video about. So we already have a migration with data move project here. I'm going to create a brand new one and just go through um, for the purpose of being a bit more concise on it. We're going to create a new project inside here. Now, if you don't have any projects set up in your uh, the cloud.google.com for your tenant already, it'll ask you to create one as you come in. So, so this whole new project thing is really where you would start with a new tenant or an existing one if you if you click on the, the new the new project side here. So I'm just going to put in here, we'll call this one migration with email move. And really that's all the information we need to give it. We just hit create on that and away it goes and does that for us. And it will create that. And it will jump into that and we can start setting up the, the API services. There you go. Now I should tell you as well that the help desk articles for BitTitan, as you can see here. Now I should tell you that the whole process that I'm going through here is explained very well in the help center in these BitTitan articles. Now where we find that is we go to here, perform a migration. And you can see I'm, I'm going down to the Google workspace and I'm looking for the G Suite Gmail. And under here, we've got, you can see G Suite using the Gmail API to exchange online this migration guide here. Now this will take us through, as you can see, everything we need to do and preparing the source and the like. And, and this is really the, the, uh, the steps that I'm gonna be taking. So rather than have this up on the screen all the time for you to look at, I'm just gonna do it on screen and explain what I'm doing. What I would want you to do is when you do set up your first project inside migration with, follow this very closely as well and then you uh, really can't go wrong with, with everything that you need to get set up and get done here. So let's go back to this dashboard here. Now, the first thing we're going to be setting up once we've got our brand new cloud project is we need to give it the APIs that that project is going to be using to attach to the data. And we do that with this APIs and services here. We look at the, the library and we're going to be adding in uh, five different uh, API libraries that it needs to talk about. So the first one is, and you just search for them, is the calendar. Once we go into that, you'll see there's the calendar API, which we'll go and grab, and you just go and hit enable. Once you do that, it will enable that inside that project, and it will just say it's done, and come back to this screen here. 
here I would then go into the library once again and just go and add the next one, which I need the one for Gmail. You see the Gmail API. So we've got the calendar and then we've got the Gmail API. We also need uh, people and contacts. So I'm just going to add those as well really quickly for the library and we just put in people here, enable that. We also need the contacts. So once again, library, put in contacts. Right here. Now some of these are a bit old, these ones. Uh, it talks about them not being developed further, that they're still okay to totally use, that they're, they're, they're available in the library for us to use, so don't worry about that. Uh, but it's obviously with with the way the progression of things go on the web, we uh, they have updates and have obviously better ways of doing things. Let's just grab that, add them SDK as well. Now, get, why I mentioned that is that in the future, obviously some of these APIs are going to be uh, decommissioned, in which case the articles inside the uh, the BitTitan Help Center will then be updated about which APIs you want to be using. Uh, so. Uh, when you come back and look at these like a new project if you do a new project in in say two or three months time it is good to refer back to the help desk article to see what apis the sdks now need to perform that migration effectively okay, so once we've done with that one we now need to go into and you hear the iim and admin and we need to go into service accounts because we need to create the service account that it's going to be using so we do that and we will hit the create service account right here and give it a name. I'm just going to call this one quick migration with email move. Um, create and continue. Very, very simple. We do need to tell it that it is going to be an owner. So we'll click on that, hit continue, and then hit done. It really is as simple as that to, to create that. Now we then need to give it the keys. Now the keys are effectively like the passwords that, that we'd use, and those are downloaded into those JSON files that I was mentioning earlier. So what we do with this one is we go into the account itself, and you can see up here we've got the keys. And we add a key, create a new one, and you can see adding a JSON file. Create that, and when we do that, it's going to be downloading that automatically for us, as you can see. So keep that file handy. We will definitely need that a bit later on. Now, the last step is we need to give it the, the service account. We need to tell it the scope of access that it can have. So we go back to the admin console here. So this is where you'd go to the admin.google.com and there's all your, your normal, you can see I'm looking at my, my single use that we're going to be migrating here. And when you go with that, under the security tab, you can see you've got access and data controls and you've got API controls. Now in here, we're going to be saying manage domain-wide delegation. So you can see here are the API clients that we've already got set up. This one is the one we had previously. This was for the, uh, the Google Drive data we were talking about. So here we're going to hit add new. Now this client ID. Now what I should tell you is that client ID is the ID of the service account that we set up inside that uh, cloud.google.com. So we need to go and grab that. So we're going to jump back into that screen. So it's good to keep that open. And when you go into the details of this account, um, what you're looking for is the, the key ID. Now, what you're going to need to do is actually click on the service accounts again and get back to this screen because it's this number here, this OAuth2 client ID. That's the one we need to, to grab out. So you're going to need to copy that to clipboard go back to your domain-wide delegation, and that's where you're going to paste that in. Now, I've just put the other window from the help desk article here because what, it's, what it gives you is the list of the scopes that you need to add. And it's very easy then just to grab those and cut and paste those away again into here. Like so hit authorize, and you can see it will put those in, and those are the... The items, if we click on view details, you can see those are the scopes that we've allowed this, uh, this particular service account to have. As I say, that comes directly from that, the, the help 
www.bittitan.com, that article we're talking about. So that's where you grab these from. And that really is everything you need to do on the Google side to set up the, the service account, the API controls, and giving it access there. So now we can move ahead to the Migration with Console again. So if I just go back in there, what I'm going to be doing is setting up a new endpoint. So I just give it a name and the endpoint type is going to be G Suite with the Gmail API. Now when I do that, it's going to ask me for this JSON account. Now this was that, that file which we downloaded previously. So we just need to go and select the file and go and grab that. And that one just pops in there and we'll give it what the super admin username is as well. Which I put in there and hit add. So really that is our, our source endpoint um, all set up. And the next step will be to set up the destination side, which is going to be the M365 side. So there's a bit more work to do on that, uh, the same sort of type of configuration we do to receive the data. So let me uh, just talk you through that one now as well. So I'm in the M365 tenant, we'll call the target tenant. I'm going to set things up for the receiving of data. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do the app registration, which is required for the modern auth component where Migration with console and the back end can then put data into any of these accounts. So if we go to show all here and we go down to identity, it could be called the Azure AD. It might have been renamed already on your tenant to Microsoft Entra. As you can see here, they are changing a few things on this. So, so just bear in mind that this may look very slightly different, but the concept is exactly the same. So what we need to do is we need to go to applications down here and we're looking for app registrations. Now in here, you're going to see some already. For some of the migrations I've been doing here, I'm going to set up a nice new fresh one for this. Uh, so this is where we go in and say new registration. You can have as many as you want in there. We're just going to tie this particular migration project into this particular application. So as I say, you can have as many as you want in there. Uh, delete them when they get old is obviously a good practice, but having a nice new one is perfectly okay. So we'll call this one migration with email move. And we do want to say this one here, the second one down, multi-tenant, and in the redirect URL, it will be have public, and in here, we paste this line in, and once again, that line is in the help.bittitan.com, the article that I showed you right at the start. That's where that, that lives. So let me just bring that over onto the page so you can see where that comes from. You can see these are the steps we're going through, and that is the, the link we're doing here. So i just put that one away again. Now, if we do the registration um, here, that will go through and create that for us. And then we can go ahead and put the other items we need. Now, we're going to need to do some API permissions. And we're also going to need to uh, make a small change to the properties in there as well. So the first one we need to do is we need to go into authentication and just go down slightly. And you'll find this one here. We need to turn on those public flows. So do that and hit save. Now we can come back to the overview again, but really what I need to go into now is the API permissions here on the left. And we need to add a permission right here. We're going to go to APIs my organization uses, and it's quite easy to, to type this in. We need to just type in type Office 365 in there. You'll see you get these, and we want to get into Exchange Online because we're, we're moving mail data. That's really the API that we need to, to have. And we need delegated permissions. Now, the one we're after here out of all of these is just a single one, which is under EWS, which is access user all. Grab that, add that permission. And you see it'll just pop up down here. And the last step on that, we need to say grant admin concept. We do that with a yes, and that will grant that for that API. What we need to grab now is the client ID and the tenant ID for the uh, API. As you can see here, it's listed on the front screen. So these are needed for the uh, endpoint registration that we can now do inside Migration Wizard. It's no longer in the advanced options. It's in the front screen. We need to know that straight away. So what I'm going to do is just grab this item here. The best place to put them is just put them straight into uh, Notepad. So here, that's the application or the client ID. So we're just going to call that application client ID and we'll just paste that in there and we'll do the same thing for the, the directory which is also the, the tenant ID so I'll just grab that one as well 
drop that in there and we'll just keep it in notepad for later on so we'll come back to that when we need it a couple more things we need to do hopefully i do recommend we have what I've got here migration with service account you can see here bigwiz at palladium.com that's one of the domains we have in that uh, in that tenant and what we need to have here i use this one to to when it asks for the uh, credentials of the admin account this is the one i give it it's good because then once you've done the migration you can quite easily take it away and just remove that account completely that's a good good security exercise to do and of course it removes all the access that it that it had inside your migration with console so that's really where my recommendation comes in there but what you do need to have is under the themes and groups here if we look at the active groups and i want to look at the security groups you'll see there's one here called migration Wiz, and so we create that one and inside here you can see that from a member's perspective that's where i put that service account as well so that's another another step that you want to uh, to do and get done it helps with that that modern authentication the console will use this security group and see that that things are are registered and it will obviously work correctly when you do that and we also need to set up the application impersonation for the account and we do that with powershell connecting to the target tenant so in here we will just do the, the normal connect exchange online and give it some credentials which we do in this little pop-up box here Hit next it'll ask us for a password and obviously on this account i've got the mfa turned on Put that in there and that connects us in now what we need to turn on here is the uh, organization customization and what we now the command we use for that is enable organization customization now this one is going to come back with an error when i run it because i've already run it previously and you can see here the error is this operation is not required organization is already enabled for customers lots of long words in there but it's already done so that's that's uh that's quite normal to see now i've also already set up the impersonation on this tenant as well so i'm going to get a similar message when i run the command to to do that but i'm going to show you what the command is also i need to show you as well is if that command fails and says that you do not have authority to create the application impersonation you can set it up manually through the exchange console in m365 so i'm going to show you how to do that as well so let's just run this command and uh, and i'll put it in here so you can see it just so we can get uh, a bit more concise on that so here's our command new management role assignment the role is the application impersonation and the user is that service account that we set up before so when i run this one let's just see what that does and you can see here it has gone in effectively nice and quickly too good now this is the response you'd expect to get um, now if you do get the error on that as i say saying that you don't have rights to do it let me show you where you'd find that in the exchange console so down here you'd go into exchange and from here we're going to look at roles and admin roles and here i've probably got one already set up yes there we are application impersonation so what you do it, if i look at this one first of all you can see um, it's also uh, the service accounts assigned as you'd expect that's what that command has just done for us and obviously the, the permissions it's going to have application impersonation here now if that wasn't there what you do is you would say add a role group and that's where you give it a name application and it, let's say i i just call this one app 2 just just so there's something in there but what we're looking for here is when you do next you would go down here and it's actually right down the bottom of the application and click on that one and then go through next and then add the people in manually that is how you'd set up exactly the same thing as that powershell command through that exchange um, admin console and that will have the same effect as the same task so and this will work through if you're a ga account as i say sometimes that powershell does say you don't have permission to run this and this is what you would need to do to get around that in the destination settings now we're going to see a new endpoint and we'll put in here we'll call that the tcg e5 demo like so and the endpoint type we're going to give it is the normal microsoft 365 and we will be providing some credentials in there with those details so we hit add now as we do that you'll notice that now we get to put that application client id and the directory of the tenant id in here 
we no longer need to put them into the advanced options. So really what we do is we take them out of the uh, notepad that we had here. So I'll grab that application ID and we'll just pop it in there. And the same thing for the tenant ID and put it in there. Much easier than having to put them through advanced options, that's for sure. And then we just hit save and continue. Now, before we carry on though, I do want to go into advanced options anyway. I do need to uh, show you, obviously you can see that's where it's gone in automatically there, which is good. But I'm looking at the source and destination options. The setting here is the default, which is convert labels to folders, uh, which is something you want to check if that's what you want to do. Otherwise you can put them as categories, but the default normally is put them as folders. That's the accepted migration path normally. And also make sure that the impersonation to authenticate is turned on here. It is a default option again, but it's always good just to make sure that your, your project is set correctly with this too. So we hit save there and we will save the project. It'll take us into the uh, screen where we can add items into the project now. Now with everything set up, I'm just going to do a quick add and put in uh, the, the, the user which we're migrating. You can also do the bulk add, put a CSV file in there, however you want to do this, but we've only got one user. I'm just going to type it in. And remembering that uh, you don't have to have the same UPN. If, you, if you're changing it, so that you might have Mark here, it might have mark.rochester at proxmashers.com. That's okay, we just add them in accordingly. We need to just specify the source and the destination. So we'll just hit save item and close, and that will pop into this screen, which is our, once again, our normal migration with screen that I'm sure you've all seen before. So really to kick off the migration, uh, we do need to apply a license. So we'll do that with that user, user bundle. So I'm gonna click here and we will apply license. Just accept that. There we go. Apply. That'll take a minute or so to uh, to appear, but as soon as we refresh and see that with a yes, then obviously we're good to go with that. Um, in the meantime, we can do the verify credentials. We don't need a license to do the verify credentials, but um, obviously I will be migrating, so I'm going to be turning that on too. So we just keep them ticked, and we'll just go to verify credentials. Now what that does is it goes into the the back end of both the source and the destination tenants and make sure that one, it can pick up the data and it can see what it's meant to have. And secondly, it can access the target tenant and access the mailbox that's in there and have rights to get data in there as well. So this is something you definitely do want to do before you start any migrations. Verify credentials, very important. We're hoping that comes back and says completed verification. So let's uh, just wait a few minutes for that to appear and see what it says. And with the refresh, a little while later, there we go, completed verification. Now that means that the source and the target tenants are set up correctly. We've done everything right, and we are good to proceed with the migration. So we're going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to explain what the pre-stage does, and then the full migration. A pre-stage is really what you would do to get all the data up to a certain point in time. So if you're doing large migrations, and you've got a large number of mailboxes, obviously if you were going to be cutting over, let's say Friday evening, you wouldn't want to do or start, say a 30 gig mailbox on that cut overnight. You want to pre-stage everything so you get all of the mail over up to maybe say the last 30 days, which is you click on here, and that will bring everything over, obviously, we accept the last 30 days. So when you do the full migration and the cutover, it just has to do the catch up which is the last 30 days of mail. So if you've got a good few hundred or even a thousand mailboxes and that they're very, very large, you want to be pre-staging at least a week or two weeks ahead. And then when you come to the full migration, you can cut over those relatively quickly on that night. So for this particular migration, it's a small amount of data. I'm not going to do a pre-stage. I am just going to go straight into a full migration. This one here, and as you can see, contacts, mail, calendars. You might have noticed on the pre-stage that the pre-stage doesn't do contacts and calendars. Those are always relatively small amounts of data in there. So therefore it doesn't need to. A pre-stage will just do the mail. So when you do a full migration is when it does all the contacts and the calendars. I can schedule it to start at a particular time. If I say, hey, I want to kick that off at like 8 p.m. tonight or, or, or whatever you want to do, you can do that. In this case, I'm just going to hit start migration and get the, get the data over. You can see that I've actually logged into uh, the account on the 365 side. So I'm expecting the data to appear there. Obviously, it doesn't happen instantly. It's got to run through and, and do the migration. Um, so uh, we'll just sit there and watch and uh, see, see the data come in. So this is finished. We've got data coming into the tenant. You can see there's all the mail there. 
have a quick look at the calendar. The calendar events have come over. It's good. And also looking at contacts. Yes, the contacts come over as well. So really what we're looking at here is a completed migration for this account. Let's just jump back to the migration with console. And you can see they're completed full. There's not a lot of data in there, so it did go through pretty quickly. If I click on the user, you can see how much it's actually done, which uh, you can see there's not too much, but it has done the, the data, which is good to see. Now, the only thing really left for this whole migration would be if we had a lot of accounts here, would be to change those MX records to point into the M365 tenant and away from Google, and then probably go back and disable those Google accounts as well after you've completed everything. So that really does finish up this session. I thank you for watching. And once again, refer to that help.bigtitan.com for more information on about how to do things. Uh, it's a very, very good source of information. It covers everything that you need to do for a migration. And also obviously go back and forwards with the video. If you do get errors on the, the statuses here or the, or the verification errors, go back and make sure those prereqs are all done correctly. And otherwise you can log a help desk ticket and they can help you out with that as well.